I'm your co-host, Cece Deva. And I'm your co-host, Nate Eshapur. And welcome to another episode of The, the Stage, Stage Players, Players Podcast. <laughs> we are so excited for this episode, which features one of the premier high school performing arts programs in the region. Yeah, that's right. We are talking about none other than our friends and student leaders at Agora High School. Woohoo! And today we'll be bringing you a superstar freshman who just finished her first year in the program and performed in last year's production of Legally Blonde. We will also be talking to some of the students on the board who will share some insights into the exciting year ahead, including some information from the student director of the upcoming production of The Diary of Anne Frank. And then we'll welcome back an alumni of Agora High who will talk to us about what the program meant to her and how it prepared her to continue the performing arts at the college level. So let's get right into it. All right, so our first guest is a dear friend of ours and is uh, an amazing performer. So without further ado, please give it up for Chloe Spivak. Thanks for having me. We actually have a few questions for you, is that okay? Yeah. All right. It's good. So, as a freshman, you played Brooke Wyndham in this past production of Legally Blonde, so, which is just a result of all of your hard work leading up to high school. So, amazing job, Chloe. Thanks. But um, what are some valuable skills that aspiring performers can be working on now so they can also stand out when coming to Agora High School? Um, I think for me, a note that I get a lot is to take risks, especially because I know during, like, in the audition room going into Legally Blonde, um, there were a lot of people singing the same song as I was, which is popular from Wicked. Um, and they were all doing a certain cut of the song, and I wanted to be different from that to make it more of a memorable audition. So I decided to do a different cut of the song, and I think that taking that risk was really... Um, it was really important because it got me to where I am, I guess, and it showed my skills vocally. So, yeah, I'm glad that I did that and took those risks. That's great <laughs> advice. So, Chloe, I know that uh, Agora High School has um, a state-of-the-art facility for learning musical theater and performing it, the Performing Arts Education Center, which we call the PAC for short. Yeah. Can you tell our audience what it's like performing there? Because um, not many schools have such a great place to perform like that. Yeah, I think, I think it's really great as an actor to be able to see all the behind the scenes as well. Like, the audience just sees, like, what's being performed, but you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes, and I think that it's really important to kind of showcase that. Um, it's really great because, you know, for the productions that I've done in the past, I don't really see that kind of, like, all the work that gets put into the show, and I feel like in the pack I get to see a lot of that happen, um, especially in the scene shop where us actors got to actually help out build some of the sets, which was really cool, and I love doing that, and it's really great. Um, if you had a wish list of productions that you'd like to perform at Agora High School, what would your top three productions be and why? The three that I would pick, well, one of them would have to be Grease because... It's such a cool production, and I love that musical. Um, it has a really big ensemble, too, which is perfect for the main stage and the sets. Like, the set would be incredible for that. And I love the 50s era, the costumes, the prop, like, everything in the whole show. It's, it's great. Um, I think another show that I would love to do at Agora would be Mamma Mia. Um, I think Agora's already done it, but I think... Uh, Mamma Mia is such a great show for the audience because everyone loves ABBA. Like, let's be so real. I'm, like, ABBA's just amazing, and all the songs are so great, too. The storyline's incredible, so I love that show. Um, and then my last show would have to be The Sound of Music because it's such a great story, and I think it'll keep the audience at the edge of their seats the whole time, and I think that that's really important. Um, and it would be such a good show to put on at Agora. I love those shows, and I feel like we would just love to see you in those shows because you'd be you'd be great in all, any of those roles in those shows. Chloe, you're such a talented performer. So, um, I wanted to ask, who do you give credit to helping you learn through all the ups and downs of musical theater, and uh, just help you to get to where you are now and all your successes? 
Yeah, I think I'd have to thank my family the most, my mom, my dad, my sister. Um, they've supported me through it all. Um, and I think that they've been like the foundation of all that I'm doing right now and where I am today. Um, also, any like acting coaches that I've ever been with, you know, like all the directors I've been with in the past, they've all taught me something new that I can take into my acting career, you know? So I think that that's who I think, you know? What has been your most memorable moment of so far with being a part of the Agora High School drama program? And what are you most excited about moving forward? Okay, so there's a lot of moments, actually. I think I just loved meeting everyone there, especially as a freshman. I didn't know that many people in Legally Blonde. And at first, I was really nervous meeting everyone because I was like, well, what are they going to think of me? You know, I'm a freshman, like, got a lead. This is nerve-wracking. Um, but I went in, and they were all so supportive and so sweet, and I loved working with all of them. They're so funny. They're such a funny cast, and I loved working with them personally, um, and I got to make friendships that will last a lifetime. Long time. So, um... You're amazing, Chloe, and I think everybody in our audience will agree. So can you share your socials with them in case they want to be in touch with you? Yeah, of course. So uh, my Instagram is chloe.spivak, and my TikTok is Chloe Spiv with two Bs. Thank you so much for coming on our show, Chloe. You're an inspiration to all of us, and we just wanted to say thank you and good luck. Best of wishes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is so fun. Thank you. Our next guest is the president of the Agora High School Drama Club for the upcoming year. So please give a warm welcome to Emerson Downey. Hey guys, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks of so course, much for yeah. being here. Um, so we have a few questions for you, all right? You, you love it. Uh, can you describe the role of president of the Agora High School Drama Club? And what excites you the most about the year ahead under your leadership? Now that is a big question because president of Drama Club does a lot of great things. Um, I think the biggest thing that the president is supposed to do or is like their main goal is to make sure that not only that like everyone in drama clubs feels connected but also like that drama club is getting spread around the school because we're a very niche group of people and like theater people are such an amazing group of people but we want them to be spread and make sure everyone knows about us so I think president is really known for like connecting with admin and connecting with like student council and other groups so everyone is aware of our stuff and we're also supporting other people at the school. What makes the Agora High School Performing Arts Program so unique in your opinion? The people. The people are an amazing group of people. Um, I think also like just the special bonds that we have with each other is like very unique to our group. Like we are a one big family. We do everything together. Like during show season, we see each other every single day, like almost all hours of the day. So we are very close. And I think you don't find that any, barely anywhere else. Like we love each other so much. And I think really spending time together and like how supportive we are of each other. How has being involved in the Agora High School Drama Club personally helped you grow and improve in the world of theater? Just being able to assert myself in situations because I'm not a huge, like, oh, I'm going to, like, go and stand up for myself person. But being in this, being on board and being in drama club and now being president, I have learned how important it is to, like, sometimes you got to stand up for yourself and especially be like, uh, I don't know if I want to do that, or like, yeah, like it's. I think we should do that. Like making sure you know when it's time to step in and know when you're supposed to stand up for something. Performing on stage might not be for everyone. So can you describe some of the many ways students can be involved in theater productions at Agora High without having to be on stage? There are so many ways, and we know a lot of the people that work behind that. There is lights, and you can stage manage. We are, I'm really close with like a lot of the stage managers there. You can do sound. And also, like we have this thing where we have production class, which is basically like another class, but it's, during, it's after school, like during the shows. So you get credit for that. And I've been in production class all three, three years, and it has taught me so much of the behind the scenes. Like I help design the posters for one of the fall plays. Like just really getting 
back behind the scenes experience that you wouldn't normally get like during school. I've also known people who have like helped with costumes and done my friend Owen does some makeup. So you can do makeup. So that there's a lot of cool things you can do if you don't want to be in the spotlight. What is one word that you would use to describe your vice president, Ashley? And what do you think you can accomplish this upcoming year with you two in the president and vice president roles? One word to describe Ashley. Um, I think I would say committed. Like Ashley, when Ashley has something in her mind, she is going to do it and she's going to get it done. And whenever she has an idea, she's going to come up with every single like possible way to like make it happen. So I think with her as my vice president, there'll be a lot of new things coming to Drama Club because she's very creative in that way. Like I can like make things happen, but I think Ashley has the really creative brain. So she'll be she'll come up with many new ideas that maybe I haven't thought of. So I'm really excited to see how that happens and maybe new drama club events might be coming your way. Do you have any socials you'd like to share? Well, my personal social is Emerson Downey, no spaces, but enough about me. Um, first, I have our drama club Instagrams, we have two, which is AHS Drama Club for like our drama club and then AHS underscore shows for our productions and then Instagora for the whole school Instagram. And then, not done yet, we have TikTok, which is AHS underscore drama club. All right, Miss President, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Best of luck to you this year. Oh, thanks, guys, of course. <laughs> of I had course. so much fun. Our next guest is the vice president of the Agora High School Drama Club, and we're extremely excited to have her on the show. So give it up for Ashley Tannenbaum. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. Hi, welcome. Can you tell us a bit about your background and how you got involved in the Agora High School Drama Club? Yes, okay, so I've been doing theater since I was like baby baby. And when I came to Agora, I knew a bunch of the juniors at the time, and I was just a little freshman, and they were all involved in the theater department. They were like, Ashley, you gotta come to drama club. And I was like, really? And they were like, yes. And so I finally, went and I was like wow this is amazing and I just like felt like I had an environment and a family from the very beginning. So. What are some of your responsibilities as vice president and what do you hope to accomplish as a member of this year's upcoming board? Yes okay so some of my responsibilities I kind of help everyone else so when Emerson is not there doing her president duties I will be taking over and I'm also assisting everyone else in their positions um, and for the upcoming year, I'm just ready to try new things and see what new things happen. I don't know. <laughs> so let's say that you were a billboard on a freeway. What cool things about the Agora High School Drama Club would you be advertising just so that you can get students excited and interested to join? Yeah. So one thing that I would definitely want to advertise is just how much of a community we are and how everyone is welcome there. Um, we pride ourselves on letting everyone come in and finding their place and being themselves. What is your personal favorite thing about the Gore High School Drama Club? Oh my gosh, again, the community. I think that we are such a big family and everyone looks out for everyone and it's just such a welcoming environment and you're scene. <laughs> yeah, it's so important to have like such an amazing family with you. Mm -hmm. So what are three of the most important traits or skills that a student must have to be successful in the program? Oh my gosh, so I don't think, I think that the most successful thing you should have is being yourself. I think that there aren't specific skills or anything. We, I mean, Drama Club isn't really affiliated with the actual production side. So to be with us, honestly, just come as yourself and have fun and be ready to, I don't know, have fun, <laughs> yeah. What kind of time commitment is involved in being a part of the drama club at Agora High School? No time commitment at all. That's what we love about it is that you can come to, we have meetings every other Thursday and you can come and to any of them and just be there and you don't have to commit to anything to be a part of it. What would you say excites you the most about the upcoming year? I'd say the amazing student directed production we have going on. Also, um, 
I don't know, we're, we have a brand new, very excited board, and so I'm excited to see what new events we're going to plan. Um, and also the same things we've been doing, such as cabaret and banquet, I'm excited for. And do you have any socials you'd like to share? Yes, so my Instagram is ash underscore tannin, um, and that's, that's my social for everything. So. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's been so amazing having you here. Our next guest is the student director of the Diary of Anne Frank production for the upcoming year. We're super honored to have her on the show. So everybody, give a warm welcome for Bailey Tannenbaum. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. Welcome, it's great to have you. Thanks. Um, so can you tell us about your background in theater and how you became interested in directing? Yeah, so... I come from a family of theater and TV people, so I've been performing my whole life um, in school shows, community theater, and regionally at Five Star Theatricals, and that's when I kind of started my love for theater and the community and the emotions that it provokes. Um, so I just love being in that environment, and I was finding ways, um, starting freshman year of high school, to get involved with my community and do more theater. And I found assistant directing as one of the ways that I could just be in the room. And I fell in love with building characters and you know making bonds with people and being a leader in that way. So I started my dream of being Agora's student director my senior year. And I worked really hard to make a pitch and I got it. So that's how we're here. <laughs> Why did you choose the diary of Anne Frank for this year's production, and what message or themes do you hope to convey through it? This is a loaded question. Um, I chose the diary of Anne Frank for many reasons. Um, first, I'm a Jewish girl who has grown up with Anne Frank and learning about her and just relating to her, and I had always felt a connection to this piece, um, but my take on it is in, when you think the Diary of Anne Frank, you're thinking, oh, it's like so sad and depressing. No, no, no. This is, well, okay. It's sad because it's happy. Anne is the optimism and light and sense of hope in a time where there is no light and no hope. And this play and the way it's written and the way that I'm choosing to present it is going to be very much hopeful and more telling us the story through girlhood more than a war story. So... <laughs> That's where we're. That's where we are. <laughs> that's awesome! I can't wait to see it. Thanks. So, um, can you describe the process and timeline of casting the show, and what particular traits will you be looking for in auditions? Yeah. So, I've already been starting to work with my assistant director Oz Wolf on finding cuts for monologues because the auditionees will come in in um, late November with four choices of monologues from the show to present to us, and that's how we'll audition them. And then we'll do some callbacks um, throughout that week and get the show up on its feet by January 16th through the 18th. So yeah, it's a quick, quick run, but that's okay. Can you walk us through your creative vision for this production from set design, costumes, music, and the final performance? Yeah, so the one word to describe the design for the show is going to be real because I'm a strong believer in that if the actors don't feel like they're really there, their performances aren't genuine. So um, I've, Drama Club has been reading the book, the, her diary this summer, and I've been writing down, like, I have a notes on my phone called random specific Anne notes of like little things like, oh, like Anne knit herself, knit herself a white sweater, so like that's something she'll be doing because the actors will never leave the stage because they could never leave the annex. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that's I, so cool. I think about this way too much. Uh, <laughs> so that's, yes. And like there'll be little things like every single pillowcase and everything will be the exact replica of how it is in the annex. So we're working really hard to make everything super real. And like there will be cards and little drawers that they can play with that'll be from the time and little things like that. So yeah, the whole design of everything is going to be super real and any research that we can find will be used to make sure that even if the audience doesn't know that it's exact, I don't know that it's exact, and the actors will know that it's exact to make their performances as real and genuine as it could be. 
That's so cool. That's, yeah. that's really cool. Like, <laughs> Thanks. Wow. So how does this production differ from previous ones you've directed or been involved in? And can you briefly describe what experience or emotion audiences can expect when they come to watch this show? Yeah, so this show is different from anything I've ever been involved with because I have a tendency to only be in or direct um, silly musicals and like things where you can be serious for a second, but you know there's gonna be a tap break. So this is absolutely not that. This is, it's lighthearted, but there's a underlying film of fear because, not to bring the house down, but they all know that this could be their last day. You never know. So I've never directed anything that has that weight to it. And I'm really excited to really dig deep and see what me and my actors find throughout these characters. Why don't you just, you know, look into the camera and tell the fans at home why this production is a must see. Yeah, come see The Diary of Anne Frank at Agora if you're looking for a laugh, a cry, or an authentic story that you everyone can find themselves in. And do you have any socials you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, my personal Instagram is Bailey underscore Tannenbaum, Bailey with a Y, B-A-Y-L-E-Y. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being on the podcast, Thanks. Bailey. Thanks. And oh my gosh, we're so excited to watch the production. Yay. Yeah, wow. I mean, this is a must-see, like, apparently. Like, <laughs> like, I'm actually really excited. Yay, thank you guys so much for having me. And the audience, make sure you follow AHS Drama Club on Instagram and TikTok for more specific details about the show. Best of luck. Thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you. Our next guest graduated from Agora High School last year and is now performing for the Pacific Conservatory of the Performing Arts at Allen Hancock College. We're very excited to have her here. So please welcome the Anna Cardino. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for being here. We're so honored. I'm so excited. Yeah, we actually have um, a few questions for you. Is that okay? Yes, please. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Anna, uh, can you tell us about your journey into the world of musical theater and what initially drew you into it? Yes, absolutely. Um, oh my goodness, I have been perform. I've been wanting to be a performer my entire life. Um, and so it all, it all really started, I mean, I was always performing for my family, for my friends. I'm like always making dances, always singing, always doing stuff like that. And so I think my parents knew pretty, pretty early what I was gonna be doing. They did try to put me in lots of sports though. I played lots of sports, terribly, really, really <laughs> terribly. Um, not, not my thing. But um, I think for me, I love, being, it came down to two things. I love being on stage in front of a crowd and I love telling stories. And so that really is what got me into musical theater. I took a lot of dance classes to begin. Um, and then really when I moved out to California, I was in my first play. Um, I was Pepper and the star to be in Annie. Um, and I think ever since that moment, I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. And yeah, that's what got me into it. Musical theater in college demands a lot from the performers, both physically and emotionally. So how did the Agora High School program best prepare you for the demands of a role in college? Agora helped me in so many ways as a performer, um, in my acting, singing, and dancing, and everything I did there. Their program is incredible, um, especially being in the acting classes. But I think I will say, what really, really set me apart and helped me on the collegiate level from Agora was being a part of the drama club and um, doing, running it and doing all of that. I was a drama club president um, last year, my senior year, and that was a lot of work. And when you're in college, especially my college and most performing arts colleges, if that's what you guys wanna do, and I'm sure it is, um, they are a lot of work. You are going from 9 a.m. to 4.30. Um, that's my class schedule. And then 6.30 to 10.30 for rehearsals. And you're always in something. And so that schedule may seem a little bit crazy, and it definitely is. But being at Agora, that was pretty much what I was doing anyway. So Agora really helped me manage my time because I'm someone who likes to make sure I can give 110% at everything I'm doing. Sometimes that's not possible. And I really was able to learn that lesson while I was still in high school so that once I got to college, I, know, I knew how to spread myself out evenly. 
And I think that's what's so amazing about Agora is that you can be involved in so many things and no one's telling you you can, you know? Like I could be drama club president and I could also be a varsity cheerleader for three years. Um, and that was amazing to me that having that opportunity and being able to learn it then set me so far ahead um, once I got to college. So Anna, you're what people would call a triple threat. Like you're amazing at dancing, acting, and singing. Um, so how instrumental was Agora High School with uh, helping you unlock all of these talents that you have? Agora, once again, is amazing at letting you, not never putting you in a box and letting you explore so many different parts of yourself. And it's such a supportive community. Um, and they really, they really, really allow you to um, explore and have fun. And so that was definitely, that was definitely a big contender. But I will say, Going up to high school, but before I got into high school, I'd been very much a singer and a dancer first. Like that's what I was very comfortable with. That's what I knew I was good at. Um, and my acting would get a little bit, it, it, I was just nervous about it. You know what I mean? Because I had come from, singing and dancing is very performative and I love performing. I love being on stage. I love to ham it up. And I would get nervous when I would be just doing straight acting because I was like, oh, I don't want to come across as not genuine. You know what I mean? Because it's not a performance. That's, you're really like acting. And um, up until high school, I hadn't had a lot of acting training, like specifically acting training. And so something at Agora was like taking the acting class and doing that for four years really like gave me, made me feel so much more confident in that part of myself. And I also had the opportunity to explore so many different characters. Like my junior year, I was, um, Charlotte in Cinderella, which was like a crazy switch for me. Um, and yeah, so I actually got to explore that. And then again, with the acting, the improv team at Agora, Agora Improv. It used to be comedy sports, but yeah, now it's Agora Improv. And oh my goodness, that improv was probably the most helpful thing for me to do as an actor. And I will confidently say that. I'd done it at Born to Perform and I'd done improv for so much of my life, but like being on that team and learning those skills and learning how to improvise like totally got me out of my head to where I was able to put, um, apply it to scripted material. You know, you can, you can take improv mindset and apply that to scripted material. And that is when like acting for me just soared. You know what I mean? And so, yes, very long way of saying that's what helped me at Agora High School. The life of a performer has both its ups and downs, successes and failures. So how do you stay motivated when things are going well, but also not too discouraged when times are tough? For me, it's always remembering why I'm here and what I'm doing. And again, for me, that is just, I love it. I am so passionate about theater and it's the only thing I can see myself doing. Um, re I actually had a time like this recently. Um, at my school, we work on scenes, and our the last scene that I did was for a big like stretch unit, and it's supposed to be um, something very, very opposite from yourself. And so the scene that they gave me to do, <laughs> I don't think you guys are gonna know this, but it was from Stephen King's Misery play, and um, I was playing Annie Wilkes, and basically she is a crazy murderer woman. Um, and that was crazy for me, a crazy switch. And I worked so hard and felt so proud of the work I did. Um, and then now we're doing the comedy unit and I'm working on Barefoot in the Park and I am really struggling with it. And it's really funny because I feel like comedy is something I was more, it was my strong suit. And so I had that time recently where I was like, oh, I'm like really discouraged. And really what helped me get out of it was just being like, you know what, I love this so much and it should be hard, you know? Because if it's hard, then you're growing and you're able to grow. And misery was really, really hard for me at the beginning and then I got to do it and it was amazing and I totally overcame it. So that's what helps me is like, even if it's, if it's static right now, if things, if you feel discouraged, like you're not going anywhere, remember the last time that happened, and you went even more, you know what I mean? So you're, you should, it should be hard, it should be challenging because that means you're always gonna be getting better. So uh, who do you credit uh, for your successes in musical theater? Um, who helped you along this journey 
and who still is helping you that that really stuck with you? Number one will always be my parents and my family. Could not do anything that I have done without them. They have been so supportive, especially since <laughs> they're a sports New Jersey family. Um, and so to jump into my big theater drama world was amazing of them. And of course, always, always, Brent and Ryan from Born to Perform Studio. They have literally made me the performer who I am, that I am today. So I took acting lessons with Ryan um, forever. And then I took voice lessons with Brent forever. I was on the competition team the first year it went. Um, and they have just, they were the most supportive and amazing environment for me to grow up in. And I, yeah, I, I literally owe everything to them. Then two more people, my dance teachers, Keenan Hooks and Cassie Silva, they were um, at Studio C Performing Arts, which I think has moved to LA now, but that's the dance studio that I went to around here. It's in Westlake Village. Um, and they are amazing. Keenan is incredible. He like literally made me the dancer I am. And he's a teacher at my school now, so he, <laughs> sorry, he's still around. Um, but yeah. What projects are you currently working on and what can people expect from Anna Cardino moving forward? I'm finishing up my first year um, at school. And so there's a couple things going on there. Um, I'm doing an original play that one of my teachers is writing. And then I'm also doing a play directed by my friend who's also a student, it's called Lovesick. So yeah, two plays coming up. And I'm also going to be teaching dance classes. I taught dance classes last summer. My class focuses on coming into the room, short warm up, learning a combination and performing the combination. So it's not about being perfect. It's not about dancing absolutely amazingly, um, dancing perfectly, it's about performing, because that's what happens at an audition, right? When you get a dance and you might not have it perfectly, but you better be performing it. Well, alrighty, Anna, can you share your socials to everyone who wants to be in touch with you as you uh, just delve into the performer you are more and more? Yes, of course. Um, it's Anna Cardino on both Instagram and Snapchat, and then follow Dance with Anna Cardino on Instagram for my dance class updates. So, we have a special treat for all of you. Um, during Anna's last year at Agora High School, she was uh, cast as Ariel in The Little Mermaid and was actually nominated for the Jerry Herman Best Leading Actress Award as Ariel. So, here is her rendition of the timeless classic Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid. Maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. I just don't see how a world that makes such wonderful things could be so bad. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything? Look at this trove, treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around, here you think, sure, she's got everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it and what's it's galore. You want thing pops? <laughs> I've got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. What's that word again? Oh, feet. <laughs> Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing, strolling along down a... What's that word again? <gasps> Street. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun. Water and free, wish I could be.
bright young women, sick of swimming, ready to stand. And ready to know what the people know. Ask my questions and get some answers. What's a fire? And why does it, what's the word? Burn. When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore? I can see why you got casted for that role because that was just phenomenal. You were amazing. Thank you so much. Incredible. Course, yeah. We can't wait to see what the future uh, holds for you. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys so much for having me. I am so, so excited to see where your futures take you. Well, there you have it. Another episode of your favorite podcast in the books. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as well as tell your friends and family to do so as well. I'm CC Deva. And I'm Aida Shapur. And remember, all the world's a stage. We're all just players in it. See you next time on the, the Stage, stage Players, Players Podcast. Podcast. See ya. Bye, everybody. <laughs>